Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce Roman. Uh, let's roll his... Uh... Hey there, Roman. Welcome to Dance Day. Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. We're very excited to have you here. Um, yeah, Roman is a front-end developer since 2016, doing it with passion, um, but always keeping his eye on the back-end, AI, cloud. Uh, tell me some of the stuff you like about um, front-end and JavaScript. Yeah, yeah. I, I was always interested in, in different technologies, but uh, uh, since I uh, started to work, I always uh, be focused on the front-end technologies. Right now, I am working in Accenture as a front-end uh, developer. And uh, this is my first talk with uh, this beautiful group. I am very uh, th thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, well, yeah, that's all about me. Awesome. So we're excited to have you here. Um, we'll let you take your talk away, but stick around because we will be asking you questions at the end and we hope they'll be challenging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Awesome. Okay. Let's start with our uh, with the presentation. So, what's new in ECMAScript 2020 and ECMAScript 2021? For this presentation, I wanted to do something a little different, and I wanted to be more focused on uh, uh, the coding side than the slides. So, the only slide that we are going to see is the next one. Please. This is an empty slide. We have this table, this kind of table, these two columns with a column for ECMAScript 2020 and ECMAScript 2021. And we are going to fill these columns together by uh, uh, resolving some issues that we have on a simple page. I'm going to show you right now the single page I'm talking about. So let's go to our website. This is a simple, simple website. We have a an header and some content inside. But as you can see, there are some errors. What we are going to do right now is to fix these errors with the new features from uh, the latest version of ECMAScript, but also clean a little the code thanks to these uh, features from <laughs> the latest versions. So let's take a look at the code. It's very simple. We have just uh, this uh, index.html, uh, very basic uh, with some with a header and a root and the import of the, um, the JavaScript. We have some styling that I copied from another my personal project just to reuse the code. And the JavaScript that is going to be the main uh, file that we are going to focus on. So let's start to check the first errors we have on the website. We see that there is some fetch that are finished correctly. There is one error and there is this get American date that is not defined. So let's take a look at the code first of all. As you can see, the first uh, we have some functions, we have four functions and the first one to be executed is the render header. So let's open uh, render header and let's check, check it together. We see a simple query selector and uh, two numbers, two big numbers to calculate the interval for uh, every, the time that we need uh, for the set interval. But as you can see, these numbers are quite difficult to read sometimes because now it's only 1 million, but sometimes it can be happen to have even bigger numbers. So to handle this situation, uh, it was added a feature only for clean coding and the name is uh, underscore as numeric separator. So as you probably saw in uh, other programming language, we can use uh, these uh, underscores just to split the numbers and make it more readable. That's a nice feature for uh, the clean coding and you can use it also for a binary and for octals, so just other kind of uh, numeric systems. 
So just to not forget about this functionality, I just place a comment I have in another block note here and just place the first functionality in our columns. So let's put the first one here. Okay. Once we, we clean it a little this code, we can go inside the set interval and check what's happening inside. Here we can see that we are trying to use this function, get American data, but it's not present in these files. This get American data is one of is a file, is a module that is copied from another project, from another project. So a different uh, environment respect to the to the website so what we are going to do here is just to import do a basic import of this file so let's just import it like uh, we all know uh, get America. like we probably all use in angular react and so on this functionality was added in ECMAScript, a different uh, version before. And to make it work, if we just refresh the, uh, now the page, there is an error that said, okay, you cannot use the import outside the module. So what we are going to do right now is to place type module. And so uh, now there are, this uh, error should disappear. Okay, perfect. Now we have a different error that appeared. Okay, we cannot read the date of undefined. Mm. What's wrong in this file that we copied from Node? Let's check it for one moment. So let's go here, get American date, and let's check this function. Function. Mm. Okay, there is something, oh, sorry. Let me zoom it a little. Okay, there is something, strange in this uh, in this function because we return this dot date probably if you ever use it uh, node you know that when you refer to this inside a module it refers to the global object uh, from from uh, the one we can use all the functionality like uh, date so what we can do here is uh, to replace this this, this, sorry for that. Uh, you can replace this with global this. This is another functionality from ECMAScript 2020. Uh, it allows us to create some reusable models between different environments. For example, a website that has uh, um, uh, that is based on the window object. And uh, that is, and if you use this same function inside the node module, this is going to take the this from node. So as we can see, after we added this uh, this uh, feature, I just paste here the global this. We should show that now. You see a date. Yeah, I know probably I sh uh, it will be better to add some margin. Uh, sorry guys, I didn't do that. But uh, as you can see now, at least we fixed the header. So we have this kind of uh, current date with a timer. But uh, for we, we haven't finished yet with this function because with ECMAScript, uh, with the latest version of ECMAScript, we also have a new functionality inside the internalization API. That's, it's called um, date time format. So if we use this object that, that is present from different uh, um, version uh, ago, we can just uh, format this uh, date specific to a, um, specific, uh, specified for a specific language. So now we can just take this date and format it in uh, an American date. So if we go to our page with this kind of date, data, date, we can just refresh it. And we are going to see that now we have the American format of the date. That's very nice because we can also add uh, different options. So let me go a new line. We can just place dates 
style full for example and also time style full uh, okay so uh, in the documentation there are a lot of different uh, options possible options this one allows at, us to put a full date and a full time so if you are going to see here and, uh, and refresh the page we have the full day with mouse but also the timing this feature is very nice not only because you can specify the the language here but if we put for example undefined it it's going to take the language from the browser so if i refresh this page it's going to change with the language of the browser as you can see here nothing changed because i'm using the english version but if for example i open uh, Firefox that is set to the Italian language and I just refresh this page I see that the text is changed in the Italian one because this Firefox is based on the Italian language and that's very nice because we don't have to care anymore about the translations of the dates because this is done by ECMAScript by ECMAScript 2021 here we are with the second comment so now let's put this as the request. So let's place the Get American Date. And let's just copy these two functionalities inside our two columns. So the first one and the second one. So as now we have three features. So now we have finished with uh, this file let's uh, go back uh, to the index.js as we see here there is a little issue that this uh, time is refreshed every second and also the rendering is uh, the inner html uh, go every second and that's not very good practice so what we can do if uh, we want to place uh, uh, only the first value in an old way well we can just remove set interval i know but just to make uh, a demonstration if we wanted to uh, leave set interval and place a check if if adder dot inner in html is not present if it's not present we can just give it the value and it's work it will work fine because if i refresh it, it do not update anymore but with uh, with the latest version of ecmascript I, I sorry if i did not say every time 2020 2021 but it's too long to say so i just place the comment with the version so with the latest version what was introduced is the logic logical assignment operator so what we can do oh, sorry just to make you an example uh, a lot of time probably you use the, the arithmetic operators so, so for example if you have some that is five you can just uh, write like this and this one means like sum is equal to sum plus two this is just to write this code in a better way so it's going to sum two to the number number five we can do this uh, this same functionality with the logical operators now so we can uh, use for example the or the or operator before the equal what does this do uh, this or check if this element is present it it uh, do not do not change it do not go forward do not uh, take this value otherwise if uh, this value is not present with this or we are going to take the second value so the right value uh, is placed inside the inner html so the first time it's empty so it's take from the right value the second time the inner html already have its value so it do not update anymore so if we go to the page we refresh it we just we can see that here the h1 do not uh, do not change anymore 
we can just uh, break it on something modification, break on uh, node removal, just to check. And as you can see, nothing changed here. And this feature is very nice because uh, it, it can be used not only for the OR, but also for the with the end. So if uh, the inner HTML is already present, so it take the right value and assign it to in this case. This is not the case because our the first time the inner HTML is empty. So we need the or. And let me let me copy the comment. Let's place it here and let's put this new feature inside our presentation. So we are going to have three features on ECMAScript 2021. Okay, so for uh, we have done for the uh, for the rendering on the header. Let's go forward and let's check the content. What is happening inside the content? Why I have here these errors? So yeah, fail it to fetch. Okay, if we open render content, we just say we just see a simple uh, get element by D, and just uh, a now weight of the characters. Hmm, probably there is something strange here inside. So let's take this functionality. As we can see here, we have three simple fetches. The first one is Ricky Morty API. The second is about the cat API, and the third one is about the hmm, free money API. That's, uh, that's quite strange because uh, here I can see there is an error with this API. Okay, let's see what's happening here. Here we can see that uh, we have promise all. What's the issue with promise all? With promise all, if we have, uh, if we have uh, uh, one API that fail if for, for any reason, all the API that we uh, have just broke. So they not go forward, it stopped there. And it is an issue because in this case, we want to use the characters and the cats. So to bypass this error was added to the promise all, a new functionality that is promise all settled. It is a nice uh, functionality because uh, it uh, allows us to return an array of uh, promises that have a different object from the fetch. It is an object with the status that it gives us the information if it's fulfilled or rejected. And we have the value object. And inside the value object, we can find the response of the fetch. So what we have done here, we just uh, have the return of this uh, free promises. We just uh, use the promise all in this case because uh, we are not expecting to, they are broken. We just check the one that fulfilled, so that this two, and we return the JSON, so the body of these responses. Let's copy the comment and let's place this to the functionality we already created, uh, the functionality inside our presentation. Okay, so with this uh, situation now, we should be able to show uh, something different at least. Hmm, okay, a new error appeared. Shuffle array is not defined. Okay, let's check what's happening here in the shuffle array. So for, uh, we already uh, done with this get characters. Here we are going uh, to use the spread operator to, um, to join the two arrays. And shuffle array, hmm. what's happening here? This is a, um, a, func a function from another file, from this module, shuffle array. Just let me zoom it a little, but we don't care so much about it. So this is a functionality from this file. What, what can we do here? The first option is to add an import as we did before for get American data. The second uh, uh, option is to use uh, a new feature that probably most of you already know thanks to Webpack, and it's the dynamic import. With ECMAScript 2020, it was added the shuffle array 
uh, sorry, it was after the dynamic import, and we can use it inside uh, at a runtime. So let me just import it. Uh, be careful that this is a promise, so we have to await it. So the dynamic import, why, why is it so strong for the one that still didn't use it? Because you can import modules, so part of your code, uh, at runtime. And this allows you, for example, if you have this uh, big, um, uh, for example, big e-commerce, and uh, your e-commerce cover the, uh, some uh, business clients and private clients, maybe you have two different modules. You have big scripts that is needed only for business or only for the private. So what can we do is uh, to uh, use the dynamic import. So for the business client, we can import the file that we need, the model that we need only for the business. For the uh, private client, we can dynamic import the, the module for uh, the private client. And that's very strong because we, we can save, uh, uh, we can lazy load part of our JavaScript code. So the, the first bundle, when you go to the first time on the page, is, uh, is not that big, it's smaller, because uh, it can be composed with different modules. So let's copy the comment, dynamic import, and let's place it inside our presentation. Let's place it here, okay. We, we're done with this uh, with the error. Let's check what is the new error that is going to appear. Mm. Cannot read model of undefined. Mm. Okay, let's check together where this error is placed. So we imported this functionality, it works fine. Here we have this characters map. So we are going to map uh, all the characters we created here with this function, so the characters card. This is the function that uh, create uh, our HTML. So it's just an article with inside a header. Inside the header, we can, let's close this for a moment. Inside the header, we can see that we are using uh, an ID from the object, we use the image or the URL. So for the header, we don't see any model. Let's go to the table. Okay, in the table, we see here, First of all, the name of the characters, the type of the characters, but also, oh, wait, wait a moment, this car, hmm, that's strange because our characters doesn't have any cars. Uh, so probably this value, this car, this value, and this model do not exist as objects. So in the old versions of JavaScript, we should do something like this, we just, had to take, uh, uh, first of all, the car, check if it exists. If it exists, we should check if the value exists also. And then we should take the model as the last item. With uh, the latest uh, features, uh, finally, the JavaScript added the optional uh, chaining. It is a feature uh, that is already present. It was present on TypeScript. TypeScript for who already used it. And we can use this in this way. Uh, what does it do? It just check. It just check if the car is present and go forward. If the value is present, you go forward. Otherwise, uh, it's return, I think, yeah, undefined. It should return undefined. This is a very strong uh, functionality because we can use this uh, on objects like uh, as now, but we can use it also in our on arrays. So just to make you a fast example, we can use this uh, on arrays. So for example, if the car was an array, we can just uh, use it like this, or we can even use this on functions. So for example, if we have a function, we are not sure if it's defined or not, we can use the optional chaining on function also. So let's go back to our object. So the value mod, okay. And let's see what's happening inside our code. Okay, we can see finally the gallery. 
we can see finally the gallery of uh, cats and uh, Rick and Morty characters. But uh, mm, there, there is something strange in this page because here we have type cat, here we have type human with antenna, here we have another cat, but why bat is a cat? Mm, that's something strange, but also with uh, this Rick. So let's check what's happening here. As we can see, uh, the cat is added here on the type. And uh, let's check what what is this type? Why uh, we have this uh, cat inside? We can just go to the network, take uh, the Rico here, here, and we can just take the preview of the responses and we can shake that some type are empty strings. And that's the reason why we have cat for all these characters. The reason because when you use or, it applies also to uh, all the false elements. So it applies also for zero and uh, empty strings, but also not a number and so on. So what uh, was introduced, introduced with the latest version of uh, ECMAScript is the nullish. This operator allows us to check only if this uh, variable is uh, null or undefined. So if it's null or undefined, it takes uh, the fallback, the cat. So let's see what's happening on the website. Let's up refresh this page. Okay, nice, because here we see empty string, empty string, here we see a cat, here we see an empty string, and so on. So let's place the two comments from here. The first one is the optional chaining, and the second comment is about the nullish. Let's place this in the presentation. So let's place optional chaining first, and the second one is the nullish. Nice. So we have finished with this part of the HTML. And that's, uh, that's nice. So we can see, uh, we can see all properly the, the gallery, but uh, we wanted another feature. We want to re replace the Morty name with Mortimer as we did here. But something strange happened because here we have Mortimer and that's fine, it's working fine. But for example, here it's still Morty, Alien Morty. Hmm. Let's check our code. So after we go, um, we return all the articles. We join all together just to make uh, only one single HTML, a string of inside HTML. But here we have this replace with Morty, Morty with Mortimer. Replace, uh, replace only the first occurrence of the string. Uh, what we want to do is to replace it uh, all the occurrences. Um, so until the latest versions, uh, we should do a regex like this one. So with this regex, sorry, with this regex, we could replace uh, all the occurrences of Morty. But with the latest version of ECMAScript, it was added a new functionality for the strings, a new method for the strings that is replace all. They finally added this. So if we go to our page and refresh it, we can see that all the Morty are replaced with Mortimer, Mortimer, Mortimer. And this functionality is the uh, replace all functionality. Let's just copy paste the comment, just paste it here and put it in our presentation. Okay. So for, okay, so for this page, we already done. The page is visible, we have the header, we have this gallery, and we used these functionalities. The global tease, all settled, dynamic import, optional chaining, nullish, underscore as numeric separator, date time format, logic assignment operator, and replace all. I just wanna, uh, uh, say that there are some other features in ECMAScript 2020 and 2021. For example, the, um, 
uh, yeah, match all, match all functionality function. This is like just like the um, match, but the match returns you only one occurrence of the matched string, matched regex inside a string. Replace all return you an array of all the matches uh, that returned. There is the big big int object. This is useful when you're going to use uh, um, numbers uh, that big, <laughs> so, so two powered uh, on uh, two power twenty three minus one. So if you're going to use so big number. Just keep in mind that there is this big int inside uh, JavaScript. For ECMAScript 2021, we have, uh, okay, let's press all. We have the promise any. Promise any is very similar to the promise uh, all settled. Promise all settled, um, we saw before that uh, help us with the promise all. Promise any help us with the promise race. Because what happened with promise race? When we have multiple promises, and the first one that responds, that is resolved, uh, is, uh, sorry, the first one that reply is rejected, the promise race broke itself. The promise any, on the other hand, take the first promise that is fulfilled. So if we have, for example, three promises, and the first one that arrive uh, is broken, Race just stop himself and, and uh, put an error. Promise any, just um, go to the next one, to the next promise that is fulfilled. Uh, also, we have uh, other functionalities, the internalization uh, list format, if I'm not wrong. List format is another method from internalization object. And it's very nice because we can format a list of, if, for example, if you are an array of bike, bus, and uh, uh, car, we can use this to join them together into one uh, into one string, and uh, this can be translated by language. So, for example, if you are using the English, it's going to be uh, bike, comma, bus, and the word and uh, car. So it creates a string with all the elements inside the, the array. If you change the language, we place, for example, the um, Italian, the end string is going to be translated with the E, that is the letter that means end in Italian. The same for the German, it translates the end to und. And uh, so it's very nice because it translates for you. And also keep care of the gram grammatical rules of the language. So he know where to place the comma, if you need the comma before the end or not. So it's very strong. And the last uh, feature I just wanted to tell you is the weak ref. This function is a little tricky because I do not suggest uh, to use it because this allows you uh, to prevent the garbage collector uh, sorry, to allow the garbage collector to collect uh, a variable uh, when, uh, no, let me do an example, sorry. If you have an higher level variable and inside the function we use that variable to assign to a new variable, the garbage collector will not remove the first higher level variable since we are using it inside the function. With the weak ref, we can avoid this and we can say, no, don't worry, just remove the higher level variable. I don't care about it. This is a little tricky, probably I will need a little more, uh, more time to talk about it, but it's um, for, uh, you need it mainly when you have to work with the caches, you, you want to cache something, uh, something uh, particular. But the most of the case, you don't need this functionality. So, well, I, I, I already over time and uh, this is the finish of my presentation. I hope that you joined the, uh, the live coding and that's the end for me. Uh, there are any questions? 
Awesome. Right. Really great talk, Roman. Thank you. Wow. I uh, I always have the utmost respect for uh, for folks who do live coding sessions because uh, the gods of the demo are never very kind. So excellent job on that live uh, coding session. It was really interesting. Um, I enjoyed it immensely and also the uh, Rick and Morty references. <laughs> um, so just a few, a couple of questions. I mean, we are a little bit over time, so I'll try to keep it short. But um, I just um, want to ask about um, browser support for the features of the ES 2020 and ES 2021. Um, what uh, what's already uh, you know integrated? What's not? What's coming? What does the roadmap look like? Things like that. Um, okay. Well. Uh... All these features are available for the most of the uh, browsers. So, for example, uh, Chrome, Safari, uh, Firefox, uh, Edge. The only one that does not support is obviously the Internet Explorer 11. Uh, we, we are all lucky that it should be the hand of him. Last month. Let's pray for him. And uh, on the only features, if I'm not wrong, that are not supported very well on Opera are the Promise Any and the WeCraft. If I don't make a mistake, these two are not supported properly, but uh, the all the other features uh, work fine for the all the latest versions of the browsers. If if you need some old version, you can use obviously Bubble. Yeah. Makes yeah, sense. Okay. Um, and uh, do you have some inside scoop on uh, what might be coming in ES 2022 or is that uh, yet to be seen? Well, it, it's still in draft. I, I read the, the documentation a little and I think the more interesting features that are going to happen are uh, the, um, uh, the await inside the functions. So at top level await, so you can use it without that sync on top level. Uh, probably the most interesting feature are going to be the private methods and the static methods inside the classes. Uh, I really hope this because with TypeScript, uh, they are very, very nice. Uh, they are talking about some decorators to add, for example, uh, for functionality like the memoids to, to make them perform and the protocols. So the protocols are a little verbose. They are just mix scenes, uh, modules. Let's see what uh, will uh, happen uh, in the next year. Oh, cool. Are you a contributor or maintainer of the project, or you just follow it very closely? I I'm just following. Yeah, yeah. You just follow. I, I, okay. Yeah. Um, and what What would be your uh, preferred or slash dream features <laughs> uh, for the next version? Well, I, I think the. Um, well, for sure, the, as I said before, the private uh, methods, uh, because I love uh, I love TypeScript. I'm the one who, who, who do probably all the projects with TypeScript. You've been outed. You like TypeScript. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I want the f features that TypeScript have. So static um, uh, static uh, methods right. or private methods are going to be very nice. And, uh, so I would really love to see them. So you're really going to take advantage of those. Awesome. Thank you yeah. so much for being with us, Roman. It was a pleasure having you here uh, and sharing uh, your knowledge with the, our community. Uh, we hope to see you at the next ones. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you.